Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. So, what's going on today? I'm out here in the workshop getting moving on what should be a pretty quick, easy project. We're going to be making a spice rack for my kitchen. So, if you want to check it out, stick around. First and foremost, I apologize for the lack of content lately. Uh, Patreon supporters, I know I still owe you two giveaways. They, those are coming, they are in the works. The parts are, the wheels are turning, they're just moving kind of slow. Which kind of brings me to my next point and why it is I'm actually making this video because this is a personal project. It's going to be a pretty basic metalworking project. Um, you know, I, have, I wouldn't call it a bad habit, but a lot of my projects I tend to take on are long, elaborate, have lots of steps, take a lot of time. And I wanted to kind of put something out that would be a little more approachable for the home hobbyist metalworker. I originally wasn't going to film this, but the more and more I thought about it, the more and more I thought it might be a good idea. So uh, anyway, let's get started. A good example of what I'm talking about is this sculpture right here. There's going to be a video on this. It's in the works, but it's something, you know, I thought I could bang out in a weekend. And now three weeks later, here it is on the shop floor. In the spirit of keeping things beginner friendly, we're just going to be using an angle grinder and a cordless drill and a welder. I know a welder is not the most common tool in the world. Not everybody has one. But if you're a hobbyist metal worker, it really is something you should have or be working towards getting. There's lots of actually really great starter machines out on the market these days. I'll drop a link in the description below to a video I ran across the other day of a gentleman actually repairing a broken excavator bucket bracket using a little $200 Harbor Freight flux core welder, and it held up great. So that's a, you know, that's it was a small excavator bucket, but still, that's way outside the limits of what that machine's supposed to be capable of, and it, and it worked just fine. So um, even having just basic welding knowledge in an entry-level machine is going to expand your capabilities so, so much. You know, being a level one welder is a million times better than being a level zero welder. So it is something you should get or work towards getting. And I know times are hard for a lot of us right now, and a couple hundred bucks isn't something everybody has laying around. But uh, think of it as kind of an investment in yourself. Put away five bucks here, ten bucks there, and before you know it, you'll have a machine and you'll be putting stuff together. For our steel stock, we got some 8th inch thick by 1 inch wide flat bar, 4 feet of it, uh, some quarter inch square bar, and some 8th inch round bar because I want to make some little S hooks to hang my measuring cups on so I'm not digging through a drawer trying to find one every time I need one. This is stuff you can find at some hardware stores like Lowe's or Home Depot. Your best bet is either going to be to buy it online or to go to a local steel supplier. You'll get a much, much better price per foot that way. So here's the piece of wood we're going to be using for the shelf itself. It's a nice piece of paddock that I got from a uh, you know local hardwood supplier. Real pretty piece of wood. So for the brackets themselves, basically this is the bit that's going to be screwed to the wall. We're going to put two holes in for some drywall screws. We're going to bend it right there and then have three holes for the screws that are going to hold the bracket to the piece of wood. You know, another to it really. All right, we got all our holes drilled. We got some 3 16th inch holes for our drywall screws and some eighth inch holes for our wood screws that are gonna attach the brackets to the wood. We'll deburr the bottom ones from the back side, deburr the top ones from the front side using a countersink. That'll just help the screws sit flush and it'll look a little nicer. Don't do it really. Next step, we'll take a flap disc on the grinder and deburr those edges we cut so they're not so sharp, as well as round over the corners a little bit just to make it look a little nicer. Don't do it really. Next thing, we're just going to bend the brackets. We're going to be doing this coal that's eighth inch. It's uh, not very thick stuff. We'll just bend it, check it with the square, make sure we get 90 degrees. Nothing to it. That'll do. Alrighty, one set of 90 degree mounting brackets ready to go. Also, while I had the flap disc, I went ahead and cleaned up the surface so when the time comes to weld on it, I've got good material. But let's go ahead and twist up some of this square bar. Quarter inch is pretty thin stuff, so we're actually going to be doing the twisting cold. You can use a crescent wrench or a twisting wrench like the one I've got here. Basically, just stick one end of your vise and grab the other end. And it'll resist you a little at first, but uh, just keep going, and it'll twist.
The cool thing about doing it cold is uh, you're naturally going to get a very consistent twist over the whole bar. If you heated this up and worked in sections, it you know might not look as good. Like I said, it will fight you a little bit, but uh, you know just put some effort into it and it will twist cold. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that one looks, I think, so let's go ahead and do the other one. It's going to be all wonky after you twist it, so just go uh, run it through the vise and sections and kind of straighten it out. That'll do it, really. So now it's time to start figuring out where we need to put the bends on our piece of twisted square bar. So I've got the brackets put where they're going to be. They're a half inch recessed from the edge. From the center of each one, we've got 32 inches, and we need four inches of material coming this way. So uh, we'll just mark it up and do some bending again. We're going to do it cold. Now the two are really. So just like before, we're going to eyeball about 90 degrees, check it with the square, tweak it if we need to. There really ain't nothing to it. So then after you get your bends in, just uh, go through, try to straighten everything up, make sure it's all lining up the way it's supposed to. And then we'll measure four inches, cut off the excess, and uh, this piece is done. Alrighty, we're posted up for the welding. Uh, basically all I've got is some fire brick pinning down the brackets so they're staying put. Which worked out to be just the right height for um, where I need to weld on this top piece, so that's pretty cool. Give it the drop test. Good to go. So, last thing to make is the little S hooks that are going to hang from the bottom and uh, and hold our measuring cups. I need nine of them. So, what I've got is my eighth inch round cut into three inch sections. I was hoping to do all the metal work on this project cold, but with a piece this small, that's just not going to happen. So what I'm doing is I'm heating it up with that little torch right there, coming over here to my vise where I've got a piece of half inch round that I'm kind of bending it around. And then I'm going to try to make all of these look like that one. Uh, you know, another two really. You could use your forge for this as well, but these small pieces lose heat so fast and uh, it's just easier to do it this way if you ask me. Alrighty, so we got all the hooks done, everything's hung up, painted, all that. It's really cold out, so the paint's drying real slow, so I'm honestly just going to leave this till tomorrow. All that's really left is attaching the piece of wood to that bad boy and uh, mounting it to the wall. So, here it is all installed. I did kind of goof up whenever I put in the holes for the drywall screws. I didn't take into account how much space the board itself was going to take up. You know, kind of a rookie mistake. So there's only one screw holding each side in. And realistically, that's plenty. This thing's holding not very much weight at all. It's going to be fine. A buddy of mine who's way more into cooking than I am actually told me I might have problems with my spices expiring faster because of the heat from the stove and whatnot. I only really cook, you know, a couple of times a week. I meal prep on Sundays usually, and then sometimes I cook on the weekends. So I'm not too terribly worried about it. You know, um, if it happens, I can always move the thing. It's only held on with two screws. But um, having all my spices and all my measuring cups right here where I can see them and get to them is pretty stinking cool, I think. But anyway, that's all I got for you. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something that you can utilize in your own personal projects. Like I said at the start of the video, I kind of just wanted to do you know, a project as kind of a palate cleanser between these long, elaborate projects I have going that take so long to finish and even longer to film. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not a professional content creator. You know, YouTube is not my full-time job. It doesn't pay my bills. So there are times when filming and projects for YouTube and personal projects just have to be put on the shelf behind getting orders out the door and keeping the shop running and everything. So there's that. But um, like I said, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope the project is something that you home hobbyist metal workers out there feel as though you can approach. And it kind of shows that you don't need a whole huge shop full of thousands and thousands of dollars worth of tooling to make cool stuff and to have a good time. But that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. There's always videos in the works. The lack of videos is not due to lack of trying to make videos. It's just a uh, lack of time. 
But anyway, uh, there's links down below to my Instagram if you want to follow me. I'm a lot more active on that platform. So if you want to stay up to date with the goings on day to day here at the shop, you know, that's the way to do it. As well as my Etsy if you'd like to purchase any of my work and help support the shop. As well as my Patreon if you'd like to donate on Patreon to help support the shop. I do do giveaways every quarter, or at least I'm supposed to. Uh, patrons, I do still owe you two giveaways. Those videos are in the works like everything else. But uh, that's all I got for you. And uh, y'all take care.